Alright, hello guys, how's it going? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at the tropics once more. We now have Tropical Storm Gamma, and we have the two other disturbances to talk about as well. Now, before I get started with this video, though, I would ask that you do subscribe if you do like weather-related content. And also, make sure to share this video with your friends, family, and social media. Now, I'd also ask that you check out our very exciting Patreon page in the description and the pinned comment down below. Anyways, for today's comment of the day, we're going to be talking about three separate disturbances. So, I want to know, what do you guys think is going to happen with the third disturbance that we're talking about in this video? Let me know in the comments down below, and I'll be picking one of those for tomorrow's video. Now let's get into this video and first things first, we're just going to take a look at the overall satellite imagery of the entire Atlantic here and you can kind of actually see where all three of our disturbances are. If you need any help, you can see there's one by the Yucatan Peninsula there, you can see a lot of pinks in there, that is our Tropical Storm Gamma. We also have one that's south of Dominican Republic in Haiti there, that's our disturbance number two. And then disturbance number three is halfway between the Leeward Islands and Africa there, so it's that one in the middle of nowhere in the Atlantic. Um, so that one's going to need to be watched, but it's a bit further out, so we have some time uh, until we're going to really need to begin talking about tropical disturbance number three. All right, now let's take a look at the satellite imagery for Tropical Storm Gamma specifically. And as you can see, this one has some very tall clouds indicated by those pinks. A uh, very strong tropical storm actually hitting Cozumel, Cancun, basically all of the Yucatan Peninsula there. I've been to Cozumel, very, very beautiful island. Unfortunately, uh, they're having a bit of a stormy day. Thankfully, it's not a hurricane or anything, so hopefully we don't see too much damage from this one. Now, what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to start taking a look at the two-day and the five-day graphical tropical weather outlooks for all of these systems. All right, now first things first here is that two-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and as you can see, we have all three disturbances here. First off, our tropical storm gamma there, which again is going to hit the Yucatan Peninsula uh, over the day, the next day or two, and then we have our one south of Dominican Republic and Haiti there with a 10% chance over the next two days. That chance is going to significantly bump up once we see the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook. And then number three here, as you can see in the middle of the Atlantic, in between the Leeward Islands and Africa there, has a 10% chance as well. So although we will need to watch this one, it isn't really an imminent threat to any land, obviously. And the percentages are quite low, even compared to these other two storms when they were starting out. So I think out of the three, this one has the least chance to develop. That should be quite obvious, uh, really, but I mean... Uh, moving forward, we could be surprised. That's how this year has kind of gone with these systems, so I wouldn't be surprised if we see something out of it, but I also would really, really not be surprised if we don't see anything. So what we're going to do here is we're going to move on. We're going to take a look at each individual system. First, the two disturbances. We will take a look at the five-day graphical tropical weather outlook, and then the gamma, uh, tropical storm gamma cone forecast we will take a look at as well. Then we're going to start getting into model guidance. All right, now first things first, here is our five-day graphical tropical weather outlook for disturbance number two. And as you can see, this one has a 10% chance still on the five-day outlook. It's going to be generally heading in a northwesterly direction there, so heading towards pretty much the east coast. Likely it would be out to sea, a fish storm, maybe some sort of implications later on for Bermuda or somewhere. But it's heading generally in that direction, but again, the, the percentages are so low. Uh, it, I, I don't really think this one poses too much of a threat anywhere, really, uh, unless that percentage starts to go up. All right, now here's our five-day graphical tropical weather outlook for our second disturbance, and this one has a 40% chance. That's bumped up a little bit here. Uh, it's going to be moving towards Jamaica, south of Cuba, towards the... Uh, the Yucatan Peninsula as well, and it might hit that sweet spot. We've been talking about this for weeks. Gamma had the potential chance to go through there earlier on. It did not, and that's why we're seeing a weaker storm. Uh, but this one does also have a chance to go through that area in between the Yucatan Peninsula and in between Cuba, and that's a little area where they can slip through and really not have too much land interaction, and that would create a much stronger storm. I've looked at the models, and it looks like later on this one could pose a threat to the Gulf Coast. That's why we tell you guys to watch out, because... We don't really know how strong this one could be, and the steering pattern really leads us to believe that this one would eventually pose a threat to somewhere in the United States along the Gulf Coast. All right, now lastly, here is our cone forecast for Tropical Storm Gamma, and this is the 4 a.m. update. This video is being made before that 8 a.m. update, so there will be some changes likely. 
Uh, we have tropical storm warnings there for a lot of the Yucatan Peninsula, so you're going to want to be on the lookout for that. Stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest information, of course. Uh, now, it's going to remain a tropical storm, actually, as it crosses over the Yucatan Peninsula, and then it's going to kind of ride southwesterly. So this one does not look to pose a, a threat to the United States. The only chance of that happening was when it had a chance to go th through that sweet spot in between the Yucatan Peninsula and Cuba. It does not have that chance anymore. Looks to head generally southward back towards Mexico uh, as we head later into next week. So really, uh, I don't think this one's going to be a threat to the United States, and it's not going to really be too high of a chance to intensify much further than a tropical storm unless we see this one head north later on after Thursday, which is unlikely at this point, but possible. What we're going to do here is we're going to move on, and we're just going to take a look at the spaghetti models for Tropical Storm Gamma, also the intensity guidance for Tropical Storm Gamma, and then we're going to start taking a look at some other model guidance. And at the very end, we'll take a look at our direct weather forecast for all three of these systems. Now, first things first, here is the cone forecast for Tropical Storm Gamma. And as you can see, there is a couple of these that have it generally heading northward at certain points, but a vast majority of these have it heading right where the National Hurricane Center cone has it going, generally southward towards Mexico, likely being suppressed and weakening by that point. Uh, so I think Gamma is going to be a non-event after the Yucatan Peninsula because for the Yucatan Peninsula, we could see some moderate impacts. I don't want to downplay this at all. There will likely be some heavy rainfall, likely some stronger winds. You're going to want to really, really be on the lookout for those types of impacts if you're anywhere on the Yucatan Peninsula or in Cozumel, anywhere like that. Let's go ahead and take a look at the GEFS spaghetti model guidance, which is an ensemble model. So each of these lines is a different member. And really, the two ensemble models that we're going to take a look at have a pretty different outlook from the normal spaghetti models. As you can see, later on, the GEFS model has it heading generally back northwards towards the Gulf Coast, potentially, as a stronger storm by that point as well, a 994 millibar low pressure center. So that's very, very interesting, to say the least. The thing to remember is ensemble models go a bit further out than most other models, so we're getting a little bit of an extended look here. Take this with a grain of salt. These models are known for doing wild things, though. And then our Canadian ensemble model here, which is not known for being as reliable of a, as, of a model at all as the GEFS or the normal models. This one actually has it heading north before it even crosses through the Yucatan Peninsula. It has a lot of United States impacts very soon. So uh, if this one was right, I'd be surprised. But we're going to want to pay attention to that as a potential possible outcome. Here's the intensity guidance. And as you can see, uh, only two of these models have it at any point becoming a Category 1. One of them much later on in the forecast, beyond five days out, actually. And then one very early on, I don't know, uh, the RI-25 model. I don't even know what model that is. So really take that one with a grain of salt. I do not see that happening whatsoever. The interesting thing is we have a very extended a length of tropical storm status with this one. Most of these models have it remaining a tropical storm all the way through the forecast. So there's going to be many, many... Uh, things that we need to pay attention to here because this is going to be a tropical storm for a long time. Might even see it impact other regions that we can't foresee as of right now. Now what we're going to do here is we're going to move on and we're going to take a look first off at our European probability of tropical depression uh, to just take a look at both systems. And then we're going to take a look at our forecast for all three of these systems. Now first things first here is that probability of tropical depression. And this is for the 8th of October as you can see. Obviously, Gamma has a 100% chance of being a tropical depression because it's a tropical storm. Uh, but we see that percentage blob kind of extend down south of Cuba. That's our second system, and it actually has a 60 to 70% chance of being a tropical depression on this model. Again, our European model. And then by the time we're at the 12th, Gamma dissipates, I think, or maybe they combine in some way. But something is heading towards the Gulf Coast here with a 40 to 50% chance of being a tropical depression by this point. Uh, by the 12th, and also it is a 10 to 20 percent chance of being a tropical storm, which is quite low, but although it is a chance, so that's something we're going to need to pay attention to. Let's get into the forecast for all three systems here from Direct Weather. Here is our tropical storm gamma cone forecast. We really, over the next five days, think this one is going to move very slowly over the Yucatan Peninsula and then really curve south from that point. Uh, back towards Mexico. There is a slight chance that after that five-day outlook, it does extend back northward. Uh, so we're going to want to watch that over the coming week or so. Here is our second tropical disturbance. And this one, again, looks to head pretty much where Gamma is, but this one does have the chance to go through that sweet spot and eventually enter the Gulf, potentially 
long-term posing a threat to the Gulf Coast. We'll want to watch that closely. That's why I put that in the thumbnail. And then here is our third tropical disturbance, which looks to head generally uh, northwestward. And then really the cone extends very far out because we haven't seen this one develop. It's kind of a huge question mark with this one. Who knows uh, what we're going to see this one do. Uh, this one's kind of the wild card, and we will be watching it over the next week or so, just like all the other systems. Anyway, for today's comment of the day, I asked you guys yesterday in our very exciting fourth winter forecast, you can check that out, by the way, I asked you guys, what is the earliest snowfall you've ever seen? And this one was the most interesting, although it wasn't the most earliest. So I apologize if you had a much earlier uh, snowfall, but Lil Red 00051 said, January 19th, 1977 in Fort Lauderdale, Florida, I do believe that that was not only the earliest, but also the only time that far south Florida saw snow. It also happens to be my birthday. So that must have been a really crazy day for you. Uh, I know the 70s had some of the coldest winters that we've ever experienced here in the United States. And actually another reason I picked this comment is my grandma lived in Fort La Lauderdale around this time. And she tells me a story of it snowing in Fort Lauderdale from around the same time period. So I'm almost positive she's talking about the same exact day that you are. So that's very, very cool stuff. Anyway, for today's patron highlight of the day, I want to thank you all for supporting the channel, but especially our diamond patrons, Alicia Davis, Madbirds, Dan Hazard, Mark J, Cindy Klein, alongside our platinum patrons, Donna Carnes and Larry LaPan. Anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this video. Again, be sure to share it with your friends, family, and social media. Also, be sure to always stay tuned to the National Hurricane Center for the latest life-saving information. I will see you guys in the next video.